Remember a couple of months ago when I did an experiment on TikTok to see if I could figure out anything about the algorithm? I conducted the same experiment on Instagram with Reels and I got wildly different results, which I am going to share with you today in this episode of the Library Marketing Show. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Angela Hirsch, and I'm the person behind the blog, superlibrarymarketing.com. Head there, look for the Library Marketing Show tab to suggest a topic or ask a question for a future episode, or to nominate your library or another library for kudos in library marketing. We will give away kudos in a few moments. First, if you find this video helpful, useful, inspiring, scary, whatever, give me a big thumbs up either on YouTube or on LinkedIn. If you're following, if you saw this video on YouTube and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. Same with LinkedIn, hit that follow button so you get a notification every time one of these videos are released. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to give the best advice about TikTok and Instagram Reels. And so I created a series of videos that were essentially the same videos and I posted them simultaneously on TikTok and on Reels. I shared my TikTok, uh, the things I learned from TikTok a few weeks ago. I'm gonna put a link to that video up here. I posted basically the same videos to Reels and the results were really different. First of all, on TikTok, my videos could be th longer than three minutes. And on Reels, I'm restricted to 90 seconds. I have a business account on both platforms. So um, I had to shorten my some of my videos up for Reels. I edited all my Instagram Reels natively in the app. I did not pull from TikTok and I didn't use a third-party editing piece of editing software. That's my first um, piece of advice for you is to make sure that when you're posting to Instagram Reels, you're not pulling that video from TikTok. They're gonna recognize the watermark. There's coding that comes to Reels with that video when you download it to your phone and then upload it to Reels. And it's going to be a marker for Instagram Reels to suppress the organic reach of that video. So edit it natively inside of Instagram and upload it natively inside of Instagram. Here's the really big things that I figured out though. Like on TikTok, hashtags are everything. And you need to put a whole bunch of hashtags on in your like video description to get good reach. That is not the case on Instagram Reels. On Instagram Reels, one or two hashtags will do the job, which is great because it's less work for you. So only a couple of hashtags on your Instagram Reels. One big thing I realized is that that cover photo on Instagram Reels is really key. So when I started this experiment, I was posting my videos and I was just like letting the app choose what flash frame within the video to use as the cover photo, which is the thing that people see as they're scrolling past. When I started to take photos and then upload those at the very end of the video upload process, you get a notification that says you can put, you know, upload your own cover photo from your camera roll. When I started doing that, I got better reach. So I think cover photos are really key on reels and you're going to need to take a little more time to think about what you want the cover of your video to look like and maybe even create that in a graphic or take a separate picture that you can upload for Reels. Um, the other thing that you can do in Reels that you can't really do in TikTok is promote your Reel in other places within Instagram. So I would post a Reel and then I would share it into my Instagram stories. And if I did that, I got better reach for my Reel. And of course, my Instagram stories are linked to my Facebook stories. So then my Reel gets shown. Uh, to my Facebook audience as well. So I think um, overall, I got more reach and I got more views, I should say, on TikTok for some of my videos uh, in the short term. On Instagram, I'm getting the same number of views, but it's taken about a month and a half for those views to accumulate. So, you know, my suggestion is to experiment with both platforms and see what your community, which one works best for them and which one they respond to, which one do you have time to do? Um, I think they both have their pros and cons, but it was just interesting to me and fascinating to find out the differences between the two. All right, I'm curious to hear about your experience at your library posting to TikTok and Instagram Reels. What are the differences and the similarities that you've noticed? Let's start a conversation down in the comments. 
while you're doing that, it's time for us to give away kudos. And kudos today is going to the Bernie Public Library. They had a great press coverage of their animals that are up for adoption. I'm going to put a link to this story down in the description if you're watching on YouTube or in the comments if you're watching on LinkedIn. What's awesome about it is that it looks like it was the promotion was like part of this over, I think it was a morning show or it's a big show on a, a local television station, but it was just really positive press coverage that shows that the library is doing some innovative things and responding to community needs. They're helping to provide a place for animals to be put up for adoption. And of course, that brings new people into the library. People who may not have even thought about visiting the library before are coming in to see the puppies and leaving with a library card. So I think that's super smart. And this press, press coverage was just great. Kudos to you, Bernie Library. A reminder, if you would like to nominate someone for kudos, you can do that at superlibrarymarketing.com. That's it for this show, but I've got lots more advice on the channel. If you're interested in that, click here and I'll see you in the next video.